Oliver writes, would like to know how Steve has been able to figure out what is a realistic work or training capacity for someone who isn't a former beast athlete. I am more of an intellectual body type and climbing 513 slash B8. I'm 42, have been training for years. I'm finding that three training sessions per week at around seven to 10 perceived rate of exertion is all I can do, barely. Any thoughts on that? Like realistic expectations? Um, is it just super individual? How how would someone like that build up their training capacity? Is that a good goal? It's super individual. Um, I I hate to say it, but at 40, I mean, you know, in your 40s, it's going to be hard to build up your training capacity. Um, so it's going to be more a function of like getting that quality in. And three days a week is is quite a bit, actually. I mean, I myself am like two strength days a week is about as much as I can handle, um, which is where different workouts would fall into place. Um, And so for example, if you're doing three days a week uh, with your climbing workouts and you have two of the strength days, so you would do like a strength volume day and maybe a max strength bouldering day, kind of like your setup (laughs) then on that third day you want to do something that's more in the anaerobic capacity or maybe what you're talking about before those those intervals and drop it down drop the volume down and yeah try to get at it with that and i would say (laughs) things like core uh really reassess if you need it or not um, core can have a huge impact negatively on your ability to do workouts and to have high quality workouts. So if you really don't feel like you need, like if, if you can drop the core specific stuff, drop it and see what happens. Things like squats and deadlifts are going to improve your climbing workouts in the long run. So they're going to have a, they'll have a negative impact in the short term like if you do a workout if you do a max bouldering day and squats on that day those squats hormonally are going to benefit the gains you're going to get from that max bouldering day but it might take you two days to recover and then on that third day you might not want to do a strength day but you might want to do more of an anaerobic capacity style day Hmm. and then you might take one to two rest days after that, and then go back to your max bouldering and squats. So as you get older, and I would say 35 roughly and up, it's good to start to bring in lifting heavy stuff, like bent, heavy bench press, heavy squat, heavy deadlift, things like that where you're moving a lot of weight, um, relatively speaking, is, is going to be good. And if you keep the reps low and reasonably fast like five and down uh the fatigue that you get from that is not is really not that much Mm. you know i mean i think the one thing that's that's gonna that's hurtful for folks trying to hit it harder as they get older is you know you do like a crossfit style workout or like going to failure on stuff um on the weights that just digs a hole and mm-hmm. not that you shouldn't do it. I mean, I, I like, I have fun doing CrossFit stuff, but it's gonna, you know, like we were saying earlier, if you're going to put a CrossFit workout in, you're going to have to take something else out or take more rest days in between or do something like that. Um, cause th- those will have probably the largest impact on recovery mm. and core is another big one that has a huge impact on recovery and a lot yes. of people don't need it. Yeah. Especially if it's like, 15 minute abs or some like gnarly right. circuit thing where that's super glycolytic and you're just like hammering the core until you're, you know, feel like you're going to puke or something. Yeah. Like that <clears> yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. I d- just drop those. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the garbage. Gonna, if you're going to do any core <laughs> stuff, like, you know, do some high intensity calisthenics type things, like try to do front levers, try to do like L seat pull-ups. Um, mm things like that that are you know do stuff on the supermans on the rent the wheel the ab wheel ab roller mm. thing is good um warning you'll be sore as hell after the first <laughs> session of that 
Mm-hmm. But if you do a couple of days, and that's from the eccentric part. So that's one of the things like if you do a lot of eccentrics, the eccentric part of the movement really stresses the muscle a lot. Mm. Hey friends, I'm interrupting my own video to tell you about Rumple. Fall is here. That means it's time to get cozy and nothing is cozier this fall season than the Sherpa puffy blanket from Rumple. As if the original puffy blanket wasn't enough, the Sherpa puffy blanket combines impossibly soft Sherpa fleece with their original puffy blanket design. As you can see, I live in a van and the Sherpa puffy blanket has been ideal for staying warm on these crisp fall nights. I've been sleeping with this thing every night and it is literally the best. It's almost too cozy. I absolutely love it. It's perfect for staying warm at the boulders or at the crag during the fall season. Great for camping and just great to have around the house. So cozy up and head over to rumple.com slash nugget and use code nugget at checkout to save 10% off your order. That's 10% off your first order when you go to rumple.com slash nugget and use code nugget at checkout. Enjoy the rest of the video. Yeah, and I'll add one small thing, Oliver. I, I've tried a lot of different stuff. I've tried training six days a week and um, kept my sessions really short and focused. Um, you know, I've tried two or three days a week. And I find that like if you're progressing workouts and doing stuff that's challenging you and building it up over time in an incremental way, it kind of doesn't matter. Like your body's going to auto-regulate based on how much total training capacity you have. And I I don't think it really matters that much how you split it up. And, you know, like your goal could be to keep your output or your intensity at the same level and build up more volume doing that. But if you keep the volume where it's at, like what's working for you and you're building up the intensity over time as you get stronger, I feel like that comes out in the wash. Um, the, The overall training load you know, your body's your body's progressing as much as it can and, and trying to pursue more days or more volume versus more intensity. I, I feel like it just, it doesn't really matter that much. Do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's something you can learn from experience and just, you know, take your two, you basically have two training variables, volume and intensity, and, you know, they, they move in different directions. So if you want to increase your abilities to do volume, then more volume is going to do that. If you want to increase your intensity level. So if he was V8 and like five, let's say 13A or B or something like that, and he wants to bump it up to 13C and V9, then I would, you know, drop as much volume of your workouts as possible and increase the intensity of them. Mm. You know, and get rid of a lot of the superfluous stuff. It's like, you know, like we were saying earlier, you look at your training program and it's like, if it's, I'm doing this and then this and then this and then this and then this. And it's like, this training day is, has 20 different things on it. Um, see as much of those things as you can drop. Like, I mean, I generally would say, you know, for me, it's like two to three things, you know, like a hard bouldering day squats and maybe that would be it actually that's it (laughs) um you know i don't see the need to do that much on top of that 